Welcome back to the Nest.js full course. In this episode, we are going to add refresh token feature to our Nest.js project. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, before moving to our Nest.js project, let me quickly explain what is the difference between the access token and refresh token. So the access token is a short-lived JWT used to access protected resources like a protected API. But the refresh token is a long-lived JWT used to obtain new access tokens when they expire. So when our access token is expired, we're going to use our refresh token to get a new and refreshed access token. In real-world applications, the expiration time of the access token ranges from minutes to hours. The common value is 5 to 15 minutes or just an hour. But the expiration time of the refresh tokens are usually much longer than access tokens. Usually we set the refresh token expiration time to one day seven days or even two weeks so now i'm going to show you a diagram of our authentication system that we have implemented so far in our nest.js application so we have a auth module it has a login api the user sends a request to the login api and issues its username and password upon a successful login we create an access token and return it back to the user so in our login api we also need to create a refresh token and send it back to the client along with the access token so in the first step we need to create the refresh token then the client should keep these two tokens in a safe place so later in the subsequent request to a protected api the user should provide an access token inside the header of its request if the access token is valid our api sends back its response to the client but if the access token is not valid or is expired the api returns a unauthorized error to the client so now the client needs to refresh its token so we need to create a refresh token api in our auth module and then user sends a request to this refresh token api and provide its refresh token that it got from the login api so we're going to create a refresh token strategy in which we are going to extract the refresh token from the client request and then validate that refresh token and if it's valid and is not expired we're going to create a new access token and send it back to the user so now the user can use that new refreshed access token to access to a protected api again so now let's get back to our nest.js project and in the first step let's create a refresh token in the login api and send it back to user along with its access token okay i open up our nest.js project and i go to the auth controller and here as you can see in the login api we just create an access token and send it back to the user so here in the first place we need to create a refresh token and send it back along with the access token to the client so let me make some changes to the login function of the auth service so here after creating a payload we're going to create a access token in this line so instead of just returning the access token let me keep it inside a constant called token and then we need to create a refresh token with this payload so we're going to define a refresh token and then we need to use our jwt service to create the refresh token but we can't just create the refresh token with the same secret and expiration time that we have used for creating the token. So first, let me create two variables in our env file for creating the refresh token. So here, let's just create these two variables, paste them here, rename them to refresh JWT secret and also refresh JWT expire in. So we're going to set our JWT expire to just one hour and set the JWT JWT refresh token to seven days. All right, now let's create a different JWT secret for creating the refresh token. So I open up the terminal and let's curl this up first. And I'm going to use open SSL for creating a secret key. Open SSL, rand, dash, dash, hex, and 32. Okay, so let's copy this strong secret key and paste it here for the refresh JWT secret. So as you can see, we have different secret keys for creating the JWT token and refresh JWT token and also we have a different expire time for jwt token and refresh jwt token so let's save this file and now let's go to the configs directory 
of the auth module and create a new configuration file. We're going to call it refresh jwt.config.ts. And I just go to the JWT config, just copy this and get back here and paste it here. But this time we need to change the type of the returning object of our factory function. So let's change it to JWT sign options. And here, as you can see, we have an error in the sign option because it shouldn't have a sign option. The expires in option should be directly inside the main object. So it's going to have a secret and expires in in its returning object and let's go to the env file and copy this variable for refresh jwt secret get back to our refresh jwt config and replace it here with this variable and also copy the refresh jwt expire in and paste it here for the expires in option let's save this and now we need to register this configuration with the config module so i go to the auth module and just copy this config module for feature function and we just need to add the refresh jwt config file inside the for feature function of the config module so as you can see we have registered two config file with our config module now let's get back to our auth service and now we can use our refresh jwt configuration for signing a refresh token but first we need to inject that configuration into this class so we can use at inject the creator and pass the refresh jwt config dot key and now we can define our dependency private refresh token configuration config and set its type to config type and pass the type of the refresh jwt config file let's save this and let's get back to our login function now we can use the jwt service to sign or create a refresh token so we're going to use this jwt service that sign pass the payload but this time we're going to replace the default configurations with this that refresh token config so this will create a jwt token with the refresh jwt secret and refresh expires in which is different from the default configurations that we have used for creating the access token itself now let's return an object that contains id which is actually the user id that we've got in the parameter the token and also the refresh token okay now let's get back to the auth controller and here we need to just return the returning object of the login function let's just return it as a response to the login api so let's send the request we've got an internal server let's get back to our vs code and here it says that signs option is not allowed in the option so obviously the error is from the refresh token config let's get back to its file and yeah we have forgotten to rename the namespace so it is the same as the jwt config and actually it has a sign in option inside it and that's why we've gotten there so let's change the namespace to for example refresh jwt let's save this and now here in the auth service our refresh token config doesn't have a sign in options inside it because here in the refresh token config we have specified the key of our refresh token and since it was the same as the jwt config here in the auth service we were injecting the jwt config instead of the refresh jwt config so now that we have changed its namespace we inject the refresh jwt config into this file let's get back to insomnia and send the login request again as you can see we have the id of the user the token and also the refresh token so the client needs to keep these two tokens in a safe place and every time the client wants to access a protected resource it should provide the access token inside its header and when the access token is expired it should call the refresh token api which we haven't created yet we're going to create in a second and provide the refresh token inside its header to get a new and refresh access token again okay so now we need to create a refresh token api for our auth module but before doing that we need to create a refresh token strategy which actually looks for the refresh token inside the headers of the incoming request and extract that refresh token validate the refresh token and if it is valid we're going to create a new access token and return it back to the user so now let's create our refresh token strategy but before doing that if you have watched up to this point 
of this video please hit the like button in order to support me grow faster on youtube thanks for your support all right now let's get back to vs code and create our refresh token strategy let's close this off and i go to the strategies directory we're going to create a new file inside it i'm going to call it refresh that strategy that ts we're going to just copy the jwt strategy so just copy that and paste it inside the refresh strategy and also here since now we have two jwt strategy we need to rename these strategies so in the second parameter of the passport strategy we need to provide a new name for our strategy so i'm going to call it refresh dash jwt and also we need to use refresh jwt secret key so instead of injecting the jdbt config here we need to inject the refresh jdbt config and let's send the type of the refresh jdbt config here and just rename this dependency to refresh jdbt configuration and as you can see here now we use the secret of the refresh jdbt configurations and that is because we have used the refresh jdbt configuration in order to create the refresh token as you can see here so we need to provide the same secret key in order to verify that refresh token so this is our refresh jwt strategy it looks for the refresh jwt token from the header of the request as a bearer token but for example you can change it to from body field and then specify the name of the field for example refresh so now our request to the refresh endpoint should have a refresh field inside its body but let me change it back to the from auth header as a bearer token so our strategy is just as the jwt looks for the refresh token from the headers of the request as a bearer token actually this is the same as the jwt we just use the different secret key for verifying our refresh token jwt okay and then here we have the validate function in which we've got the decoded payload so if the refresh token is inside the request header as a bearer token and it is a valid refresh token and it's not expired this strategy is going to call the validate function and pass the decoded payload that it gets from the decoded refresh token so here we're going to return an object that contains the id of the user which we've got from the decoded payload object the returning value of this validate function will be appended to the request object under the property name user so now we can go to the auth controller and create a refresh token api and use this strategy for it but before doing that we need to create a new guard for our refresh token strategy but first let me rename this strategy to refresh jwt strategy and also we need to register it inside the auth module so i register it inside the providers list of our auth module let's save this and now let's create a guard for our refresh strategy so i'm going to say nest g g u which stands for guards is going to be inside the auth module and inside the guards directory and is going to be refresh dash auth so if i go to the guards directory you can see it creates a refresh auth and inside it we have the refresh auth dot guard .ts. so let's just extend the returning class of the auth guard function and pass the refresh jdbt name which is actually the name of our strategy that we have set here inside our refresh jdbt strategy let's get back to our refresh auth guard and put the body of our refresh auth guard class now we can go to the auth controller and create a refresh token api so here inside the controller let me create a post endpoint under the route refresh and let's create a refresh token function and we should mark it with the use guards and pass the refresh auth guard so now we can access to the request object here and here inside the function we can access to the rec.user.id so we're going to return this that auth service that refresh token which we haven't created yet so we're going to create it in a second and we just need to pass the rec.user.id so let's 
create this refresh token function inside our auth service get back here and just copy this refresh token function and paste it in of our service class and here we get the user id and then set it to number and inside it we're going to create a payload and also a token so here as you can see we're going to create a payload here from the user id and then create a token with the sign function of the jdbt service so note that here we just use the default options of the jdbt service to creating a token because we are going to use just the jdbt secret key here not the refresh jdbt secret because it's a access token not a refresh token okay now we can return an object that contains the user id and also the token itself now let's save this and before moving to insomnia to test our refresh token api let's get to end variables and set the jwt expire in to just 60 seconds so after 60 seconds our jwt is expired and we need to get a new one with the refresh token api let's save this and open up our terminal we don't have any error so let's go to insomnia and first let me send a request to our login api to get a new access token and refresh token so let's just copy the access token here it is only valid for just 60 seconds now let's go to the profile api and inside the auth header let's choose the bear token and paste it here if i send the request you can see we have access to the api and it returns us the response so let me pause the video for just a few seconds to pass our 60 seconds of the expiration time okay now let's send the request again as you can see even if it passed more than 60 seconds it still gives us the response for the profile api and that's because we need to set an option inside our strategies so let's get back to vs code and here inside the jdbt strategy we need to put a new option ignore expiration and set it to false okay let's save this and let's go to refresh strategy here and put the same option here ignore expiration and set it to false now let's get back to insomnia and first let me get to the login api and get a new access token okay let's just copy that and go to the user profile paste it here in the auth bearer token send the request to our profile api you can see it gives us the response so now let's wait for 60 seconds all right now let's send the request again as you can see we've got an unauthorized error so let's get back to our login api and copy the refresh token and let's create a new http request let's rename it to refresh token and paste the refresh token inside the auth bearer token of the request header and just send a post request to the auth slash refresh now let's send the request you can see we've got a new access token and let me just tamper with the refresh token a little bit and send the request you can see we've got an unauthorized so we need to provide a valid refresh token let's paste the refresh token again and send the request again you can see now we can get a refreshed access token and let's copy that go to the profile endpoint and paste it in the bear token send the request you can see now we've got the response from the profile api so yeah in this way we can have a refresh token in the authentication system of our nsjs project and in the next episode we are going to talk about how we can revoke an access token and also a refresh token when the user log out from our application so make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell in order to get informed about the next video and also if this video was helpful for you please hit the like button and help me grow faster on youtube thanks for all your support have a nice time and and stay tuned for my next video. Bye-bye.